This is a proof from neutral geometry, in which we assume Euclid's axioms 1 through 4 are true. Many mathematicians tried to prove that Euclid's fifth axiom could be deduced from the first four, but inevitably these attempts were not successful. However, many mathematicians found statements which were logically equivalent to Euclid's fifth axiom. For instance, we have earlier seen that Playfair's axiom is equivalent to Euclid's fifth axiom. Here we're going to introduce another postulate, which is also similarly equivalent to Playfair's axiom, and hence to Euclid's fifth axiom. This postulate is deceptively simple and straightforward, called the rectangle postulate, or Clairaut's postulate. A rectangle exists. That's it. Here, by rectangle, we of course mean a quadrilateral with four right angles. We don't need to assume any other properties, such, such as opposite sides being parallel to each other or opposite sides being of equal length. All we know is we have a convex quadrilateral with four right angles, and we will assume Euclid's axioms 1 through 4. We'll show that if you assume Playfair's axiom, you could construct a rectangle. And conversely, perhaps surprisingly, if you assume that a single rectangle exists, this is in fact enough to prove Playfair's axiom. For the first half of this logical equivalency, we'll begin by assuming Playfair's axiom is true, and we'll show that rectangles exist by, in fact, constructing a rectangle. We begin by constructing a right angle, ABC. The lengths of AB and BC don't really matter. And then we'll connect these points, A and C. Next, we'll construct a perpendicular line, M, perpendicular to AB, that passes through the point A. We'll also construct a line, N, perpendicular to BC and passing through the point C. Now the angles is marked here. Alpha plus delta is equal to 90 degrees. That means the angle delta is less than 90. Similarly, theta plus epsilon add up to 90 degrees. Therefore, epsilon is less than 90. Because these two angles are less than 90 degrees, we know that the line M and the line N must intersect at some point. We'll call that point D. This intersection is guaranteed by Euclid's axiom 5. Next, by the alternate interior angles theorem, we know that since the line M, the line through B and C, the alternate interior angles are both right angles and therefore equal to each other, this implies that the line M is parallel to the line BC. Furthermore, we have earlier shown that Playfair's axiom implies the converse to the alternate interior angles theorem that is Euclid's Proposition 29. This theorem says that given two parallel lines in a transversal which cuts them, the alternate interior angles must be equal. Therefore, this angle at D must also be a right angle. Therefore, this quadrilateral, ABCD, all four angles are right angles, therefore, ABCD is a rectangle. Now, we begin the second half of this logical equivalency, we will prove that under the assumption that a rectangle exists, that Playfair's axiom is true. Our strategy for this proof is going to be to show that given a rectangle, we can show that the angle sum of any triangle is equal to 180 degrees. This is Euclid's Proposition 32, which we've also earlier shown to be logically equivalent to Playfair's axiom. So. If we can prove this about the angle sum of triangles, we may conclude that Playfair's axiom is true. Before we begin this, we'll define a few things. First, sigma will denote the angle sum of a geometric figure. For instance, the angle sum of triangle ABC will be equal to the sum of the angles A, B, and C. Similarly, the angle sum of quadrilateral ABCD will be equal to the sum of the angles at A, B, C, and D. We'll also define a function lowercase delta for the angle deficit. Delta of triangle ABC will be 180 degrees minus the angle sum. Similarly, the angle deficit of quadrilateral ABCD will be equal to 360 degrees minus the angle sum of that quadrilateral. Now in this proof, we'll divide it into four steps. The first step we want to show that the defect functions are additive. In other words, if you take a triangle ABC and subdivide this into two triangles ABD and ACD, 
the sum of the deficits of the two component triangles equals the deficit of the large triangle. This proof is straightforward algebra. If we draw in all the angles, here labeled is alpha 1, alpha 2, or the angles composing A, the angle at B is beta, the angle at C is theta, and the two angles at D are delta 1 and delta 2, observe, by definition, the defects of these three triangles, and furthermore, by the linear pair theorem, we know that angle delta 1 and angle delta 2 sum to 180 degrees. By adding together the two equations for angle deficit for the triangles ABD and ACD, delta 1 and delta 2 will combine to give us a 180, which will cancel out one of these 180s, leaving us with the deficit of triangle ABC. We can prove a similar formula for quadrilaterals. Given the quadrilateral ABCD, not necessarily a rectangle, even though it may appear so, if we take this quadrilateral and divide it into two triangles, we can show that the deficit of the quadrilateral is equal to the sum of the deficits of the two component triangles. Again, simply label all these angles, write out the expressions for the deficit of each of these figures, and then adding these two equations for the deficits of the triangles will produce exactly deficit of the quadrilateral. Finally, one more note before we proceed. The angle defect of a figure is never negative. We know that the angle sum of a triangle is always less than or equal to 180 degrees by the saccharie legendre theorem of neutral geometry. Therefore, this delta, which is 180 minus the angle sum, this angle sum is less than or equal to 180. Therefore, this value is always non-negative. Similarly, since the angle defect of a quadrilateral is the sum of these two non-negative numbers, it too is non-negative. Proceeding on to step two, we'll show that arbitrarily large rectangles exist. Given a rectangle ABCD, we want to show that we can create a rectangle much larger than this. So first, we'll take the side AB and extend this line to a point E such that AB is equal to BE in length. Similarly, with the base of this rectangle, we'll extend the line DC to a point F such that DC is equal to CF. Now I'll draw the lines from B to D and also from B to F, and we actually have two congruent triangles by side angle side. Triangle BCD is congruent to triangle BCF because they share this side, BC. They have the same angle, right angles down here, and by construction, DC is equal to CF. Therefore, these triangles are congruent, and I can also mark these congruent angles beta, these congruent angles delta 1. Now a little bit of subtraction shows us that angle ABC is a right angle. Subtract beta, I'll call that alpha. Similarly, this angle on the side EBF must also be equal to alpha because it is also a right angle, subtract beta. And this leads us to another pair of congruent triangles, specifically triangle ABD is congruent to triangle EBF, once again by side angle side. Side AB is equal to side BE by construction. These angles alpha are equal, and BD is equal to BF, as we just proved. So these two triangles are congruent. Therefore, the angle at A, which is a right angle, corresponds to the angle at E, which also must be a right angle. Additionally, angle A DB, which I've marked as delta 2, corresponds to angle EFB, which is also delta 2, since over here, delta 1 plus delta 2 sum to the angle at D, which is a right angle. This implies that the angle at F, the angle CFE, must also be a right angle. This gives us ADFE, a quadrilateral, where each of the angles is a right angle. Therefore, we have another rectangle. And you'll notice that the width of this rectangle is double the width of the original rectangle. Now, we could repeat this construction. Now that we have one rectangle, we could produce another rectangle on top of this by extending the side DA and extending the side FE. And we'd have a rectangle, both of whose dimensions, the width and the height, are twice as large as that of the original rectangle, ABCD. 
Continuing this process as required, we can create a rectangle as large as we want, or as large as we will need in step 3. Now we come to step 3. We'll show that for any right triangle, the angle defect of that right triangle is 0 degrees. In other words, the angle sum of any right triangle is 180. So we'll start with a given triangle, A, B, C, and we'll assume that angle C is the right angle, and we'll construct a very large rectangle, D, E, F, G, so large that the side D, E is larger than the side C, A, and the side D, G is larger than the side C, B. We know such a large rectangle exists from the previous step. Now on this rectangle, we'll construct a point A prime on the side D, E, such that the length of A prime D is equal to the length A, C. Similarly, on the side D, G of the rectangle, we'll construct a point B prime so that the length from B prime to D is equal to the length from B to C. If we connect the point A prime and B prime, by side angle side, with the triangle A prime B prime D is congruent to the triangle A B C by side angle side. Next, we're going to take this rectangle D E F G and observe that because it's a rectangle, each angle is 90 degrees, its angle sum is 360, and therefore the defect of this or any other rectangle is 0 degrees. Now we'll start to subdivide this rectangle. D, E, F, G. Draw the line from E to G. That subdivides this rectangle into two triangles, E, F, G and E, D, G. We know the defect of the rectangle is the sum of the defects of these two triangles. Next, we'll take this triangle E, D, G. We'll draw this line from A prime to G. This line marked as line 2. This subdivides this triangle into two smaller triangles, the triangle E A prime G and A prime D G. We know that the defect of this large triangle is equal to the sum of the defects of these two component triangles. And last but not least, this line from A prime to B prime divides the triangle A prime G D into two smaller triangles, and once again, the defect of A prime D G can be written as the sum of the defects of these two component triangles, a prime b prime g and a prime b prime d. Since the defect of this rectangle is zero, and the defect is written as the sum of these four non-negative numbers, each of these numbers, each of these defects, must also be equal to zero. In particular, the defect of triangle a prime b prime d is also equal to zero. But this triangle is congruent to triangle a b c. Therefore, its defect is also equal to zero. Now we have arrived at the final step of this proof. Step four will show that for any triangle ABC that the angle deficit of that triangle is zero degrees. In other words, its angle sum is 180. Now, by the saccharine legendre theorem, which holds neutral geometry, we know that the angle sum of triangle ABC is less than or equal to 180 degrees. Therefore, at least two of the angles must be acute, must be less than 90 degrees. If this was not true, if two of the angles were 90 degrees or greater, then these added to the third angle would be greater than 180 degrees, contradicting the saccharine legendre result. So, without loss of generality, let's assume that the two acute angles are angles A and B, or alpha and beta, as I've marked them here. Next, we construct a line L which is perpendicular to the line AB and passes through the point C. And the point of intersection of L and AB, let's call that point D. We note that this point D must in fact be on the line L between these points A and B. If this were not true, for instance, is it possible the point D would be outside of the triangle here? Well, then we'd have a triangle BCD one of the angles is a right angle. If this were true, the angle beta, which we previously said was acute, this angle is an external angle to the triangle BCD, and the external angle theorem says that the external angle to a triangle is greater than or equal to either of the two interior opposite angles. But 
beta is not greater than 90 degrees, and this would contradict the external angle theorem, which holds in neutral geometry. Therefore, the point D cannot, in fact, lie out here. We know that the point D lies between A and B. Therefore, the triangle ABC is composed of the two triangles ADC and BDC. Also recall from step one that the angle defect is additive. The angle defect of triangle ABC is the sum of the angle defects of these two triangles. But we proved in step three that for any right triangle, the angle defect is zero. Zero plus zero is zero. Therefore, the angle defect of the original triangle ABC must also be equal to zero. This tells us that the angle sum of any triangle is 180 degrees. In other words, the angle sum postulate holds. Earlier we have proven that the angle sum postulate implies Playfair's axiom is true, and this completes the proof that the existence of rectangles implies Playfair's axiom is true. This also completes the logical equivalency between these two statements.